not just Ergo's ad company. Well, those are the companies like, that make the money are American companies, so it's like Oracle, Google, uh, Microsoft, Apple. But the, the fact is the money there does not get distributed very well. Open source would usually be supported by people who would be employed by the uh, the local administration or some sort, like people, mm-hmm. the system administrator, hacking code and collaborating. No, and, and really, you would just have to do the do a little bit of research and get the hard numbers on that, and just do you know PSA is not sponsored by any political party, and just air them for the entire election cycle. <laughs> And yeah. people would go, okay, so how do you feel about saving saving money and distributing wealth and, <laughs> and making a bloody political issue? I don't call you a communist. If you say, if you may even mention the idea that Steve Jobs was not like the greatest man ever, he deserved every penny he had. He deserved it all because he was a hero. If you say that, they'll say, oh, you're an anti-capitalist, you're a communist. You want to take his money away and give it away to people. Well, what I'm saying is... Like- you, you want to give to that would be you do realize how capitalistic some of the aspects of some open source projects be, are, right? Mm, well, depends on the project, but but I, I think the uh, one of the issues I've seen is is just the implication that uh, that we should trust the big business people instead of trying to empower the developers, because because you could help loads loads of developers if you have more and more people rely on open source software, which would be kind of good for people like us or you know, capable programmers, uh, and wouldn't be very useful to all those like levels of like patent lawyers and uh, all businessmen or who are very good at marketing themselves and making loads of money, but are not very useful for the economy. They just kind of hoard all the money and make sure that we don't have any choices but to be their clients. Uh, so that that's the unfortunate thing here. Well, on that note, I think we'll start to wrap up uh, the show. A couple of uh, very brief mentions. Uh, anybody who uh, has listened uh, to my words before or read my, reads my site knows I, I have a little fetish for uh, gaming on Linux. So uh, this is a little plug, and it's uh, I was writing about this on uh, Diaspora, and it's probably all Roy's fault because he got talking last night on IRC about Street Fighter 2, which was a blast from the past in the days of the Super Nintendo. So today I wasted the entire afternoon playing, uh, well, using the multiple arcade machine emulator and uh, Street Fighter 2 uh, arcade ROMs and having a great time with that. Now, I can just envisage now certain people that are picking up their pens and papers and writing down, oh, he's infringed copyright, he's uh, downloaded uh, some illegal ROMs, and I hate that word, illegal. Uh, well, it's not the fact. Unlawful. Um, well, sorry? Unlawful. Unlawful, yes, thank you. Okay. But unfortunately for them, I actually own the original PCB of Street Fighter 2, which I was just discussing with Roy and Rusty as to whether it would be worth any money if I put it onto eBay. And I'll be doing a, a very good investigation of that after we finish the, this show today. Um, it's an excellent package. I strongly recommend you take a look at it. Um, it's a multiple arcade m- a machine emulator that covers um, a plethora of processors and PCBs over over the years, from the very first arcade games to sort of semi-modern um, from about the late 90s, I believe. Uh, so it's absolutely fantastic. Um, get a look at that. Uh, I've been still enjoying KDE, and uh, in particular, um, PC Linux OS, I think, is fantastic. I'll say it again. It's um, rock-solid stable, and it's produced me, well, a fantastic environment to work in. In fact, I've been favouring it over Sabayon for a few days because uh, I've been interested in exploring KDE a little bit more, something I've, uh, I've neglected over the years, shamefully. So there's that. Thank you for listening, as usual, and thank you for all your feedback and uh, comments that you send to us, either directly or indirectly. We do try to uh, take note of a few of them. So um, thank you for listening. Uh, hope, as I said at the beginning, if you have anything to say or would like to come on the show, please get in contact with any, any one of us, and uh, we'll try to sort something out. I'm hoping in the next few weeks that we're going to have a developer behind a great uh, educational distro who's going to come on and uh, have a few words with us. So we've got that to look forward to. And thank you very much for your time. It's greatly appreciated. In a couple of weeks' time, and I haven't got uh, the mental capacity at this late hour to work out exactly how many days it is, but um, on the 1st of November, it's going to be a significant date for myself and Roy and now Rusty. It's the 1st of November was the first date of our um, ep- episode 1 of the show. We did a pilot show a couple of days before, I believe, but uh, the 1st of November 2010 was the first uh, episode of Tech Bytes. So with that in mind, when we start our effectively series 2 in uh, November, we're looking for ideas and hopefully a, maybe not a change of direction, but something uh, something to 
to improve the show from, from the last the previous year. So um, thanks very much for all your support and thanks for listening, which is supporting itself. And uh, hopefully you'll, I don't know if Roy's got a tune to go out. Yes, we do. Yeah. You have brilliant. Yeah. Well, hopefully we're going to get some that. statistics. I checked, uh, as you probably know, the uh, place where it's hosted. We're very fortunate we don't have any uh, bandwidth limits because I know the person who runs the server in the data center, so he just gives us as much as we want. But I check the uh, I check behind the I check behind the cache how many requests direct requests we have for the OGS and the MP3s and over the past three days we had about uh, I think it was four hundred four thousand four hundred downloads of the OGS files and uh, uh, sixteen hundred and something of the MP3 files. So just for those who wonder, we still have a about three times three times as many downloads of the default format, which is OGS format. Uh, as opposed to the MP3, even though you'd expect the MP3 to have more. Uh, so it just means most people who listen to the show, they are preferring the uh, the open format or the free format, which is just an interesting statistic. Well, with that in mind, will you take it out with the final track of the night? Well, the last one is, if you think the, the name is quite suitable, it's, I think this one for me, and it's by uh, It's True. Don't Tell me I'm still your man Don't ask me if I still get lonely Don't let your heart break again Take this one from me, my darling You're better off And the cold-hearted come back jokes All you really had to do was draw the line